What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys my daily driver review of the Android P Developer Preview 1. Now I did a full review of the new features that I found interesting in the first developer preview. I'll drop a link below if you guys wanna check it out. You can see right there the build number that I'm running. This is the only developer preview so far for Android P. So today I wanna to talk about uh, battery life, smoothness, uh, how easily you could run this uh, as a daily driver if you wanted to, and then also talk about some of the new features, what I like and dislike after using it for two weeks. So first, let's talk a little bit about performance. Uh, the performance has been surprisingly good. When I originally installed the preview, I actually had some issues with apps force closing. I actually had a really big issue with Flamingo, which is my Twitter client. I wasn't able to properly send tweets. It was glitching out, but then I did a full factory reset and now it seems that Flamingo, most of my other third-party apps are all working. Occasionally you will see an API warning when you open an app like this right here at the bottom, detected problems with API compatibility. Uh, this is StockX, an app I used to buy sneakers. That also happens with Spotify sometimes, but it doesn't appear to actually affect the functionality. For instance, I can still open the StockX app and I can go in and browse things and the app functionality seems to work just fine. So in terms of that, it's not a big deal. Smoothness has been very good overall. I haven't had many issues navigating around the UI. One thing I will say is that because of the new animations, it does feel a little bit slower than the phone felt on Oreo. And also you'll notice that apps do reload, like Gmail especially. I've noticed that it will reload quite a bit, so it doesn't stay in memory as long as it did on Oreo. I don't know if that's just perhaps a little quirk or a little bug or whatever. But navigating around the UI in general has been fine. There haven't been too many hiccups since I did the factory reset. Now services that you might want to use are another story. I've been using my Movado Connect Wear OS watch right here with the Pixel 2 XL while I've been running the Android P preview. And there are some issues with running the Android P preview with Wear OS. Sometimes it doesn't always push my notifications as timely as it would if I was running Oreo. And occasionally it will also tell me that the watch is actually not connected to the phone when in fact it is. So I've definitely had a few issues with Android Wear. I think that's been the case in the past with other iterations of the uh, Android previews. The other big service that I've had a couple of issues with is connecting using Android Auto in my uh, Audi A6, which I run Android Auto every day. And I basically have decided to stop running it with the P preview just because it will crash occasionally and just completely wipe out whatever I'm doing if I'm listening to music, podcasts, in my car. So I've been using the Galaxy S9 Plus to connect with Android Auto because that doesn't appear to be that stable. Hopefully they'll fix that before the official beta comes out at Google I.O. The next thing is battery life. So battery life hasn't been as good as Oreo, but it also hasn't been terrible. I've been able to get through a full day. I get maybe four and a half hours screen on time on average with this is my daily driver. That's pretty good. I was probably getting about five and a half hours on Oreo, if I remember correctly. So this is definitely a step down, but again, because of some of these bugs and instabilities, you probably would expect to see something like that. You can see screen out usage since the last full charge, two hours and 30 minutes. So I'm on pace to get close to five hours this time, a little over four and a half. Not bad at all. Battery life is not a deal breaker here. The next thing are the features. So let's talk about a couple of the user facing features and what I thought of them. The first one is the volume bar that's been moved to the side, used to be at the top on Android Oreo and before. I don't particularly like the location after using it for a few weeks just because it kind of gets in the way of whatever you're doing. The other thing that I really don't like is that they've actually separated out muting and do not disturb. I like to keep my phone on do not disturb quite a bit, but you can't actually access do not disturb from that side menu. You have to go on up here and turn that on in the quick settings or in the main settings. If you go down to mute here, you can actually change your calls, you know, ring, vibrate, mute, but that won't put it on do not disturb for the rest of the system-wide sounds. One of the improvements they did make, which I really like, is the media control. So if you tap on media there, you can control all of your different Bluetooth devices, my car, headphones that I've connected. You can also have up to five total devices connected to your Pixel 2 XL on the Android P developer preview. If you go into system, and go into developer options here, you'll notice that they have simultaneous Bluetooth connections down here, the number of devices that you can have. One is the default, but you can change that all the way up to five total devices that can be connected. There is no simultaneous audio though, so that would have been nice to see, but you can't actually control that. So 
The sidebar is a mixed bag. I like some of the media features, but I don't really like the uh, option of the placement. The settings that I've, you know, sort of grown accustomed to over using it for a couple of weeks, I still think I prefer the Oreo settings, which are a little more minimal in my opinion. The one thing I really don't like about the settings is the lack of the expandable quick tile. So if you, you know, tap on this or, you know, long press it, it actually takes you into the settings menu itself. You can't just expand any of these quick tiles in place like you could on Oreo. I thought that was a really useful feature. Don't know why they got rid of that. Hopefully they'll decide to bring it back in a future version. The colorful settings aren't really a big deal breaker either way. They're still in the same order as they were before, so not a big deal from a usability perspective. Whether or not you like the color, of course, will be up to you, and that's really an aesthetic choice from Google's point of view. So those things are all very big user-facing things that we talked about in the last update, and I think that I've gotten used to most of them, but I think they will hopefully reconsider the volume placement and maybe detaching Do Not Disturb, and also the expandable quick tiles and everything like that. Those would definitely be changes I would like to see them consider in the beta that we're gonna see at Google I.O. Lastly, I wanna talk about a few things that are under the hood that Ron Amadeo over at Ars Technica discovered in his article, which I'll link below. The first one is a ambient music action open history setting that was discovered in the code itself. This appears to be a way to save your now playing history, which of course, if you have some music playing, your pixel will display the title here on the ambient display. There is a couple of apps that already allow you to do this, like Now Playing History, you can download from the Play Store, but it looks like Google is looking at integrating a solution that's first party. I think that's something people wanted for a while to save the history of songs that your Pixel has heard before. The next thing is settings intelligence. This is a very interesting one. Basically it holds in memory your Bluetooth settings, your ringer settings, so that it can automatically turn your ringer from mute, do not disturb, ring, vibrate, etc. as you do it throughout the day. So it learns a little bit about how you use your ringer settings and also when you have Bluetooth on and it'll offer to do that schedule for you. And then perhaps the most interesting mystery inside Android P code is this idea of a slice. So a slice is going to be something that you can take out of an app and then use that action or piece of the app inside another app. So probably the best way to think about this is through this uh, description that they found in the Android P docs. It says, slices can display text images, action buttons from an app. So you can display anything that you want outside of an app inside another app, and that will give you ability and flexibility to basically use things like PayPal and eBay natively, or maybe use one little piece of feature of an app that you need in your current app without leaving it. So this offers a lot of flexibility. It's kind of mysterious, but it should be interesting to see what this expands into and hopefully we get some more details at Google I.O. Anyway guys, that's my overview of the Pixel 2 XL running the Android P developer preview as a daily driver. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon so I can make future videos like this. Find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter at the links in the description. Also find me writing over at gadgethacks.com where I write about Android. I appreciate you guys checking it out and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.